before we proceed with today's business, I wish to announce that I have been informed by the Democratic Alliance that it has designated Ms. N.W.A. Mazon as the new Chief Whip of the Opposition. Congratulations, Honorable Member. Yes, sir. Before we proceed, I just want to check if the President will be using these facilities because they are obstructing us. So if not, it was then oral-based interaction. Firstly. Secondly, it may be cheating if orally he'll be looking at that thing when he answers, because then it means it's not an oral reply. And therefore, can we please get a chance for these things to be removed either way? Firstly, they are obstructing us. Secondly, it will be a cheat. If the president will be looking at the teleport to answer our questions orally, then it's not an oral reply. Honorable Deputy Speaker. Yes, yes, may I, I you, may I address you on the same point of order? No, wait a minute. Uh, let the member sit down when he must do so when he finishes talking. Go ahead, Honorable Member. Honorable Deputy Speaker, if the Honorable Dr. Ndlozi was seated in his own seat, he would not be obstructed. <laughs> De Deputy Speaker. On, on the same point of order. On the yes. point of order, yes, on the I'm, I'm sitting in my own seat, but I'm, I'm obstructed as well. <laughs> and he was raising on behalf of all of us who are obstructed. Yeah. Okay. Deputy Speaker. Yes, Honourable Member. I have a confession to make. It's my first time today, there for me. Yes, I remember. Yeah, Deputy Speaker, it doesn't matter. The substantial objection has to do with the fact that this is an oral session. So this is not going to be sustainable if the president is being given because they are electronic and digital, these things. Okay. Okay. We've seen a lot of incompetence in answering orally. Uh, we don't want to subject the president to that. All right. They must go with the greatest respect. Honorable Speaker. Uh, it's Deputy still Deputy. Speaker. Thank, Deputy. You, thank you, President. Yeah, Deputy. Thank you. My apologies. <laughs> it's an upgrade. Everybody's getting promoted these days. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start off by congratulating Mr. Stian Hazen, Honorable Stian Hazen, and Honorable Mazzoni for acceding to the new positions. And I hope that they will execute their responsibilities with a lot of effectiveness, as we expect. So, congratulations. That's where the upgrade is, President. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. You know, President, mm. South Africa is the most unequal society in the world, and that inequality is based on race. It's true. Where white minorities are rich and the black majority is poor. We've got an unemployment crisis. The NDP had said that by next year, unemployment will be 14%, by 2030 it will be 6%. Currently, it's now approaching 30% in terms of official definition. But overall, we've got more than 10 million people who are looking for jobs or are capable of working who do not have jobs. Poverty levels are at the crisis level. The ministers today said we've got a huge fiscal crisis. The debt to GDP ratio is approaching 70% in terms of all these issues. And throughout the 25 years of your misdirection of government, there's not been achievement, even of your own objectives. At the NDP, New Growth Path, as GISA, GIA, you have never reached anything. Don't you think that the ANC is not an appropriate vehicle to drive about meaningful economic transformation in South Africa? You have tried everything. 
You have made lots of commitments, but you are not delivering anything. Don't you think that in, when it comes to real economic transformation, you are a pen? No, I don't think that the, a, the governing party uh, is uh, an inappropriate vehicle to transform this country. In fact, the governing party is the one that is transforming this country and has done a great deal. Over the tw past 25 years, everyone admits that we have indeed, we have indeed seen a great improvement in the lives of our people. That has happened, whether you like it or not, whether you agree or don't agree, the people who vote, the voters in this country have always invested their hope and their trust in the governing party. That, Honorable Shibambu, is the real litmus test because if the voting people of our country ever had this notion that you are talking about, they would have voted possibly for you. Mr. President, thank you very much for your kind words, and I look forward to these engagements as we deepen our democracy and the service of the people of South Africa. I'm meeting you soon after this to shake your hand. Thank you. I'm looking yeah. forward to that, and I hope we have a cigar as well. Honorable <laughs> Glozi, <laughs> it is your turn now. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Mr. President, the paper of Mr. Mboweni yes. speaks about a continuation with IPPs that have been a big problem financially to ESCOM, privatization of water and irrigation services. Uh, but most importantly, the paper's perspective on spectrum allocation. We have a big problem in the telecoms of a duopoly where Vodacom and MTN own about 71% of the market share. And there is no detail, but it looks like the government's attitude is towards auctioning spectra, high demand spectra. Mm. If you auction, you are selling. Mm. How will you break the geopoly? If you want to break the geopoly and you are selling mm. the spectrum, the obvious reality is that the big players have more money yes. and therefore there won't be competition. Data prices won't go down as a result despite the fact that they keep promising, as it were, that that allocated spectrum will help them or will help the end user to have, you know, much more relief in relation to data prices. But you'll never have competition with that route. What exactly is the government's position? Okay, and in particular, with breaking the duopoly of MTN and Vodacom. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker and uh, Honorable Ndozi, you, you will have heard me speak in this National Assembly about addressing, and in a way, if you can use the type of term that you would use, attacking the monopoly structure of our economy and breaking up monopolies. The competition law amendments that we've put in place are also aimed at doing precisely that. So my question to you is, can you please tell us today what interventions, if any, can you list as initiatives that your government has taken since your pronouncements to ensure greater support for shelters? And please, can you furnish this house and the nation at large with a number for the toll-free national government gender-based violence call center? The number, please. Thank you. Mr. President. Well, Honorable Deputy Speaker, let me start off by saying I don't know the number off by heart. I can help the president. I'd love you to help me. Let's have a coffee and you'll give me the number. No, but I think the nation must hear. Okay. So it's 0800 428 428. You can take it down, president. I'll buy you a coffee. Thank you very much. The, I did mention what the minister or treasury did. P point of order, Mr. Pr uh, Deputy Speaker. When members were heckling this side about the importance of this question, you both were very strong yeah. to call them to order. Yeah. 
members of the ruling party are heckling when another member is raising a genuine question and you remain there complicit. It's wrong. They were heckling at our member. Honorable member. Please call them to order because we are just, all of us must be subjected to the same equal law. Honorable, honorable member. Honorable member. Uh, take your seat. Uh, uh, honorable members, the, the whippery here uh, acted on this matter. If you defy even your whips, it's wrong, all of you. No, don't screaming shame, what shame? Shame on you, on you, all of you, all of you. You are inconsistent yourself. You deliberately keep quiet when it's not you. It's out of order. Order, honorable members. Look at what you are doing now. Just look at Kate and Vadunjale, no. You are, uh, honorable members, order, please. Firstly, we need, I think it is important to remind Honorable Stan Hazen that you are a former General Secretary of a trade union. Therefore, how you relate to communists and trade unionists is none of his business, quite frankly. And he will not dictate to you how you should respond to them. Now, let's now deal with issues of national interest. President, whilst acknowledging that so Pre now you find yourself all right to scream as you do now. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Now you find, no, 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 no. You must be in order. You must not scream so that everybody is listened to. It's on a point not of order, Deputy it's Speaker. It's not justifiable. Deputy Speaker, on a point of order, firstly in this House, one does not speak to, uh, directly to a member of the House. The Honourable Member direct, directed her statement to Honourable Steenhuizen. She's supposed to be no. asking the president a question. So if you're going to give, you've got to get back. So, okay, okay. Honorable member, let's assume you are right, which is likely. So it is correct for your members to do what you're saying they shouldn't do. Is that correct? Deputy Speaker, what I'm saying is this. If an honorable member in this house is going to direct a statement to the, the leader of the opposition, she must expect a heckle back from the opposition. Okay. If she's willing to speak to us, she must okay. be willing honorable, to get an answer from honorable us. Honorable Mazon, welcome. Welcome to the club. You are going to get it back, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Deputy honorable Speaker, President, please Deputy go ahead. Speaker, as I once famously please said, go ahead. bring honorable, it on. Honorable member, you don't speak before you are told to speak. You must be allowed, you must be allowed to speak. Take your seat, honorable member. Honorable Kietze. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Mr. President, uh, the sociological characterization of politicians currently is being questioned in terms of their dishonesty. And I would require you to be honest, extremely honest with the, question, the answer you are going to give us. Currently, there's more than 55% of youth unemployment in this country. And in 2018, you have uh, launched what we call YES, the Youth Employment Service. We want to check how many thus far did the, does the, the YES program produce? How many employment did it produce for young people? And in 20 19 this year at SONA, you promised young people 2 million jobs. We want to check the progress. How far is that? Uh, how many employ employment opportunities have been created? Because we do not want to get in a situation where you promise people another millions of jobs without understanding what went wrong with the previous ones that we had promised. Thank you very much. On a point of order, Chair. Um, yes, Honourable Member. I, I'm rising on Rule 142. Hmm. Which clearly states 142.6, which clearly states that a question must, must relate to the original question or the response of the, the president. Mm -hmm. It is not like that. And then number two, the, the very same question is of statistical nature. I don't think the president can have the numbers with him. Then right. can, can you do that? Okay. Point of order. Uh, What's the point of order? The honorable member obviously has comprehension problems because the question has to do with summits and the promises of jobs are related to these summits. So I don't know which parliament he's part of uh, and which question paper is he reading, number one. Number two, if he has to stand and defend his own president for answering questions and giving details about his own promises, then we're in real trouble. The president must answer. If he doesn't know, he must say, I don't know. So we know he's a, not a useful president. 
Uh, uh, you see, Honorable Ngroz, I don't know how you now put the president into this. Uh, you should have stayed out of what the president is going to say, yay or nay, and hear him do so. Uh, honorable member, I'd like the president to respond to me. Yes, Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> order, order, order. Ah, <laughs> hey, hey, honorable, <laughs> ah, hey, man, it's quite so quite so good. Ah, Honorable Deputy Speaker, I'm able to answer the question. So, Mungamin, when can we start seeing the governments move on red tape reduction and can we count on your supports on such a bill within the coming year in this house to slash that red tape and enable job creation? You have the president. Point of order. Point of order. Yes. Deputy Speaker, the uh, new leader of the DA asked this question as a follow-up earlier on, that will the president support the finance minister to remove the red tape? And there are honorable members with new questions. Can we maximize the time of this question? Because it has already been answered, this question, in this session. Yeah, OK. It looks like the new DA doesn't have creativity now. Uh, OK. No. <laughs> Isn't it time that you put a tiger in your tank and committed to reversing this unjust policy Your term and is give expired. them a chance to own and buy the state owned land. Mr. President. Honourable Stianes, and I'll, I'll be very, very um, clear and direct with you and fair and say yes. And a, a variety of interventions we, we, we should make on land reform should include precisely the point you are making. Thank you very much. Yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker, let me start off by making an announcement. <clears throat> I have been requested by the, the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Honorable Natim Tetra, who is currently in Japan, waiting to uh, attend the, the final, and he's directed me to join him, which I will be doing uh, after this uh, question and answer. But he, he requested, he said, President, I know you are answering questions in, in the National Assembly. Could you kindly make the following announcement that we would like all South Africans tomorrow on Friday at 1300 hours, 1 p.m., to either wear the Springbok jersey if they have one, to pause for a moment of silence wherever they are, and uh, to, if they are in vehicles, to blow their horns at one o'clock so that we send a very clear support message to the Springboks. Naturally, we expect them to play their hearts out on behalf of all South Africans, knowing that all of us are going to be firmly behind them and that uh, they will be lifting the Webb Ellis Trophy to bring it back home where it belongs. Yeah. 